Soldiers of the Air Defense Unit of the 28th Separate Mechanized Brigade shot down another Russian Su-25 attack aircraft in Donbass, according to the Kortitsky Wind, and the 28th Separate Mechanized Brigade named after the Knights of the Winter Campaign. The Ukrainian military says that the Russian aircraft tried to shell the positions of the Ukrainian Defense Forces. However, Ukrainian soldiers landed the Su-25 with an accurate shot from a man-portable air defense system and now it is burning up in the steppes of Ukrainian Donbass. The incident took place in the Kramatorsk sector. As of today, the Russian attack aircraft has one less aircraft. Its wreckage is now decorating the Donetsk landscape. We congratulate the Knight Brigade on opening an account for the downed Russian aircraft, Kortitsky Wind says. The soldiers of the 28th Brigade add that the fate of the crew of the Russian aircraft is still unknown. However, the military stressed that they knew that there was one less problem for the Ukrainian infantry. Recall, on July 7, Ukrainian soldiers from the 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade named after Mark Bazruko was shot down by a Russian Su-25 attack aircraft in Donetsk region. Also, on July 23, the Ukrainian military shot down a Su-25 plane of the Army of the Russian Federation in the Pokrovsk region of Donetsk region. Ukraine's invasion of Russia's Kursk region has dramatically changed the dynamics of the war between the two countries, emboldening Ukrainian troops and citizens. But as The Hill writes, the strategy is not new. Israel made a similar move in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. In that war, Israel was initially on the losing side, caught off guard by the invasion of both Syria and Egypt. Within days, Israel began to recover and stopped the attacker's advance, but a more decisive step was needed to turn the tide of the war. Thus, the strategy of crossing the Suez Canal and taking the battle to Egypt was conceived. The Israelis invaded Egypt, isolated the Egyptian Third Army and closed in on Suez with the Egyptian capital Cairo in their sights. This changed the course of the war as the two superpowers backing each country, the Soviet Union backing the Egyptians and the United States backing the Israelis, both became concerned about being drawn into conflict and calls for a truce intensified. As The Hill writes, the Ukrainian offensive in Russia is reminiscent of the early successes achieved by the Israelis. Moscow is only 300 miles from these front lines. Although few think the Russian capital will actually be in danger, its proximity to the fighting is disconcerting. It may be enough to shift the course of the war by taking the fight deeper into Russia, as the Israelis did by crossing the Suez Canal and threatening the heart of the Egyptian army and its major cities, the article says. At the same time, the newspaper writes, Putin is in a different position than Anwar Sadat, the leader of Egypt at the time. For Egypt and Syria, a negotiated peace made sense because they had achieved some success, dealing a critical blow to Israel's self-esteem and bleeding its army dry. But for Putin, such a peace could be his undoing. If he is pushed to the negotiating table by a successful Ukrainian offensive that seizes Russian territory that Moscow cannot retake, it would undermine Putin's air of invincibility, an image already battered by his protracted war against Ukraine. The Hill writes. According to Ukrainian intelligence, Belarus has pulled its army and Wagner militants to the border with Ukraine. In turn, Kyiv is demanding that Minsk withdraw its troops. In particular, Ukraine's intelligence has information that the armed forces of Belarus are concentrating personnel, equipment, tanks, artillery, MLRS and air defense in the Gomel region near Ukraine's northern border under the guise of exercises. In addition, mercenaries of the former Wagner Group was spotted. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs noted that the exercises near the border and the Chernobyl nuclear power plant pose a threat to Ukraine's national security and global security in general. We call on Belarusian officials not to make tragic mistakes for their country under pressure from Moscow and on its armed forces to stop hostile actions and withdraw troops from the state border of Ukraine to a distance exceeding the range of the fire systems available in Belarus, the statement says. 
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs emphasized that Ukraine has never taken and is not going to take any unfriendly actions against the Belarusian people. However, in the event of a border violation, the Ukrainian state will take all measures to defend itself. We warn that in the event of a border violation, Ukraine will use all necessary measures for self-defense and all troop concentrations, facilities and supply routes in Belarus will become legitimate targets for the armed forces of Ukraine. The ministry summarized, a grouping of Belarusian forces massed on the border with Ukraine consisting of about 1,100 people and poses no threat to Ukraine, the monitoring group Belaruski Hadun has said. Let's keep in mind that according to Belaruski Hadun's information, the grouping concentrated near the border with Ukraine consists of about 1,100 personnel and this number of troops transferred to the border poses no threat to Ukraine. Let's also bear in mind that the troops are deployed up to 50 kilometers from the border. We believe that the objectives of the current escalation of the situation at the border are information related and political, not military, Belaruski Hadjun has said.